Okay, let's assume that you've actually made an intelligent choice and instead of saving up God knows how many hundreds of dollars for another lens, you actually bought a studio strobe. So you got a nice strobe and you might have an umbrella. Let's hope you have an umbrella. Or you have a softbox. Everybody asked me, this, this is the video that had to be made. Of course, necessitatively so. I, as a, a Greek Platonist, I always pay attention not to what someone says, which of course is important, but like a true detective and a true philosopher, you can tell as much about what someone understands or what they're doing by the statements and the questions that they don't ask. So it's softbox, softbox, umbrella, umbrella, softbox, softbox, umbrella, umbrella. And that's all well and fine. It certainly has its place. So let's assume you got a nice set of umbrellas. You have a convertible umbrella, which this isn't one. You're going to drop it on uh, your speed light, on your light stand. You're going to take some nice shots, either indoors or outdoors. Well, that's all well and fine. How limiting is that? Well, you know, if you want to make a nice composition that's evenly eliminated, that's wonderful. It's also boring. You know what it reminds me of? You know, everything runs in cycles, certainly composition. Run. You know, the days of us going to Montgomery Wards or to uh, Sears and Roebuck where they had the portrait studio and they would just blast the piss out of you as a little child or uh, back in uh, college, that's fine. That's certainly that's the sort of lighting that you want, but it's not dramatic, it's not very interesting. You know, you could have the hottest model in the world and, you know, if you got boring lighting, it's like, well, she's a gorgeous chick. Next. So... The question that isn't being asked is everybody talks about, well, what sort of softbox should I get? Yeah, well, that's fine. What sort of umbrella should I get? Yeah, well, that's fine. What sort of, uh, you know, reflector do you recommend? Well, you've got tons of different reflectors. You've got long throw reflectors. You've got eight, eight and a half inch uh, standard reflectors like this. you got retro laser reflectors. There's all sorts of reflectors. But what is the most important light mod for your studio strobe? It is limited. It certainly allows you to do a whole lot more than you could without it, but let's turn off the light and let's look at the light mod for your studio strobe that unless you have it, and it's really, really cheap, and nobody ever asks me about it, unless you have honeycomb grids, you are pissing in the wind. You're pissing in the wind. It's just as simple as that. Now, this is a 30 degree, and these are metal grates. Let's take a look at my ugly face through a grid. Okay, and this is a 15 degree. These pop on, off and on, easy greasy. So, here I am with a 30 degree. This one's been on for a little while. It's a little hot. Hotsy totsy. Okay. Boom. Too much harsh light. Not enough directionality. Boring and interesting. Obviously, I'm going to have this turn the other way around, use an umbrella reflector. Great. Well, that's fine. So, drama. What I could do, this is a 15 degree. What I could do with this. See, I'm really limited. Especially, this is important, what you cannot do with a speed light. You can stick a snoot on a speed light. That gives you great directionality, but a speed light and a studio strobe. You got no continuous wissy wig. What you see is what you get coming off of your speed light. You actually do, kind of, there's a little feature that'll actually uh, strobe the speed light out to give you a tiny little burst of uh, continuous lighting, but that's not enough. And your, your person's constantly going to be doing this. When you get a 15 degree grid on it like this, you're going to be moving and weaving. They are, in the slightest little bit, it'll totally change the composition. So here I have nice continuous lighting. I uh, hit the, my wireless trigger or cyber commander, whatever I got, boom instantaneous. Now obviously I can set uh, my modeling light to match my uh, flash output or I can do whatever I want. It depends on what sort of uh, studio strobe that you got. But the most important light mod, and these are so cheap. So, so cheap. Don't try to make these yourself. These are metal, will basically last forever. And uh, for 20 bucks a pop you can actually buy them and in, in most people that make studio strobes, including Paul C. Buff, will sell these as a set. I think a set of these is like $30 for the 30 degree and the 15 degree. And by the way, if you have an ABR 800, they make a 20 degree for it. They only make one honeycomb for the Alien B. 
if you're at 100, but that's fine. It's a single 20 degree. I can point this at backgrounds. I mean, I could uh, skim light uh, uh, faces. I mean, the, the possibilities with a studio strobe and continuous modeling light, what you can actually do, just, you know, crazy stuff that you cannot do with a damn umbrella and the best studio strobe that money can buy. Now, this is an Einstein 640. It's $500, $499, whatever. Uh, you'll need a, a little receiver module for it for wireless transmission. I think it's a CS, uh, CS, CSXRRX. It's something like that. It's $30. It plugs into the Einstein unit and you uh, set that uh, to receive for your uh, wireless transmission. You have a lot of different options. You could use a PC sync cable and plug into the back of this unit. Or you could even use your pop-up cyber commander on uh, your Nikon. If you have a Nikon with a uh, pop-up uh, pop uh, uh, flash on your uh, Nikon D810 or uh, 750 or whatnot. So you don't even need that. So you got a, a slave dome on your, uh, your Einstein 640, 640 watt seconds. But what I can do with this honeycomb... As far as modeling, I mean, uh, effect, film noir, the drama. I mean, this takes your studio strobe to a whole other level. I mean, uh, you're not as old as me. Maybe some of you are. I'm sure some of you are much older. Some are the same age as like me. Some of you are younger. I mean, just the notion of, you know, popping an umbrella on a studio strobe and having a pair of them and just blasting the piss. You know, and that's great and all. you got depth of field, perfect illumination. You've got no definition of a compositional depth as far as separation between specular, diffuse, and shadow. You know, there's no character or drama in the shot. It's it's way it's perfectly illuminated, you know, with the uh, you know, you've uh, you, you nailed it on the focus, you've uh, nailed it on the depth of field. Something's missing. But it depends on the composition you want. But I say you have the best studio strobe in the world and uh, you know, all the umbrellas and all the and none of you ask me, none of you I mean, thousands of questions, thousands, and nobody asks, well, I got a studio strobe or I got an Einstein. It's like, what about a honeycomb grid? And you ain't got a honeycomb grid, you're pissing in the wind. I mean, it is, this is, starting to blind me here. I've got the modeling light set up a little too high. This is the most important uh, light mod that you could have. It's flat out bar none. Like I said, you've got a little more options with this since you've got continuous modeling light. So, if you got a studio strobe and you don't have a honeycomb grid, then you need to immediately get them. They last forever, they're cheap as dirt, and the spectrum of what it will let you do... <laughs> the spectrum of what it will let you... Now you can't see my face, which is a good thing, right? The spectrum of what it will let you do go from this to this. Actually, it's more like this. So please, I'm not about spending money. But if you're going to spend $500 in a studio strobe and you got an umbrella and a softbox, but you don't have like a $30 set of honeycomb grids, then you is making a mistake. Just flat out bar none. So think about that, okay? Very, very important to have those with uh, your studio strobe. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you later.